Today is Thursday, April the 25th. We hope you're having a great day in the Lord, just using all your moments to remind yourself that Jesus provides for you. I have loved Eric's sermon on Sunday. It was a great opportunity just to be reminded how God intervenes, he steps in, and he does provide. Yeah, I, I, I appreciated Eric's message the most. Uh, when he, he said, you know, um, how did this happen? It was God. It was, it was God. It just, can God help? Absolutely said so clearly and so concisely, and um, that's a good reminder for me that mm -hmm. in our in our busy seasons, in our hurt seasons, God provides. Yes, and then we got to keep looking to Him. Yeah. As always, we're going to go through these questions. As I remind you every week, you really should be discussing this with somebody. No reading for yourself. Discuss them with somebody though. So here's Adam and I discussing these questions for the first time together. The so, first time. The first time. Um, the first question is: What is the busiest season? you have ever been through and what sustained you through it busiest season there's a i feel like life is a series of busy seasons hmm. they just kind of come and go what what is your skin what do you got well as i the first thing that popped into my head thinking yeah. about this is covid and i know for a lot of people it wasn't a busy season hmm. but i know for us around the staff like trying to figure out how to do church digitally for the first time and and to <laughs> shepherd people we weren't even allowed to go to their house I felt like I was more frantically busy yes. during that season than any other time and just trying to figure out how to take care of people distantly. Yeah, distantly. Um, uh, is that a word? It is now. Distantly. I hate COVID, all right? Um, the, the memory <laughs> of that, just when you said it, I get this visceral Go. reaction <sighs> to, to COVID. Um, no, I, uh, I, you might be right. I mean, that was... There's been other ones too. Uh, our name change season was a busy season mm -hmm. for us. Um, as we uh, changed this that around the church, some busy things. But the COVID really was like when it first happened. I had this I had this naive thought of you know we're gonna be at home and it'll be a season just investing in the family and sitting around and we're gonna watch lots of TV and we're gonna get caught up on chores of the house until I realized you couldn't buy materials to catch up on chores of the house nope. and all that happened. And then um, I, I don't know if everybody knows what it was like at church during COVID. It was like, crazy. We had church online for, it was only like 10 weeks. It wasn't the, the longest time ever. There were certainly parts of our country and the world that went longer than we did for sure. But mm -hmm. uh, 10 weeks or so, um, Keenan, how did we, how did we help our worship gatherings happen? How did that work for so us? So we had to figure out how to do it online for yeah. the first time. Because before that point, like you're watching online, if you joined us the last few years, this is normal to you. It was not for us no. uh, going into 2020. We would sometimes record a sermon and then upload it on Monday, but nothing was live, nothing was live streamed. So figuring out how do we help you worship God where you're at, mm -hmm. instead of coming to the building and on a dime having to figure that out, yeah. was really chaotic. And so the things we did was we had the minimum requirement of people show up um, for a little while, actually, you filmed at, I think the first week you filmed at oh, the yes, church. I did. Or I, at the at home. I filmed at home and we kind of spliced it together. Mm -hmm. And then we figured out that was terrible and we need a new way of doing that was, it. That was not a sustainable model at all. Um, largely due to the fact that I am not good with technology. Uh, that does not work well. Um, so then what we did, we came together, mm -hmm. minimal number. It was three people. Yeah, right? and we found out because that was when the numbers were coming out, you need to be at least six yeah. feet apart. Yep. And so three people, and we were. We were like all over the auditorium. We, we were in the auditorium, and, and we set up on the stage. We had a, a television there for like some some you know lyrics and some points and things. And, and Keenan, you would sit on a stool next to the TV, and you would lead some singing via the, the recording there mm -hmm. while I sat in the chairs over there. And... and uh, uh, McKenzie was the one doing mm -hmm. the video work for us. She sat over there. We had we had a table with another table on it, and a, a tripod, and the camera was up here. And, and another was, camera. It was it was nuts. It was weird. And then you would sing for a while, and then you'd stop and be finished, and, and you would walk away, and then you go over there, and I'd come back up around this way, and I'd sit here and do the teaching and the the preaching, and then oh, it was nuts. It was hard. Yeah. Uh, we have a whole um, yeah. compilation of just you trying to figure out. Action! How do I talk to the camera? It's like a ten-minute thing. It was a lot of oh, it was man. a lot of takes, but we were, we were having to figure it out. And I think as hard as that was, it was harder for me to figure yeah. out because some of you remember this. Like you guys were going through hard times too, and I couldn't just show up at your house. Yeah. At least we didn't know we could at that season, right? And so how do I hurt? How how do I help people through their hurt, through their pain? How do I walk alongside you and check in on you when I'm not really allowed to show up? For those first few weeks um and then yeah. as we learned more about stuff it was mm -hmm. easier to kind of pivot but it was still 
It, we, and then we did church different for a year. We did after that. that was, I mean, a lot of phone calls, a lot of Zoom meetings. Uh, we we Zoom never really went away for us. We do Zoom all the time still. That's but, true. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of times. I stood in a lot of front yards mm-hmm. and had conversations through the yard. You know. Um, and then coming back, when we came back in the building, I remember that first that first Sunday back in the building. You know, welcome home. We, it was yeah. a welcome home thing, and and uh, we had it was weird. You came in one door through an empty lobby, came in, you sat down, these paced out chairs, then you left out the other door, and uh, there was no touching. And the, yeah, it was. And we had to clean in between everything, yeah. so it was just. To me, that was the busiest season, but it was probably other busy seasons, but that's the one it was, closest vivid in my mind. It was, I don't know if it, honestly, man, the busiest. It was the most draining season, though. Maybe draining. that's why I thought it was busy. Yeah. Yeah. It just felt draining. Yeah. So, that's a long winded answer for us uh, to say that that's what we did, but what sustained us through it really was two things, I think, if I could just be honest, and I, I think you would agree with this. One is our reliance on Jesus. Like, we had to, and during those times, we were talking to each other and different people, like, Jesus is either who he says he is, and we actually trust that, yeah. or he's not. And the other thing was really you, as, as a leader leading you, finding ways to help you thrive helps sustain me. Yeah, I think that's right. I think it, Jesus, we start with Jesus, and he was part of that. And then and then you, as we were uh, leading and serving for you, right? I want to add a third one, though. There okay. was a third one for me. Uh, honestly, it was you. And, and me, I think that the togetherness in there, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, McKinsey and some others and, and other staff too, part of things. But I would say, Keen, I think before COVID happened, I think you and I got along great and worked together well. Mm-hmm. I think really honestly that that couple of year period was what forged our friendship and our trust more it's than true. anything else, you know? It's true, because uh, I I mean, I think if you were honest, we have friends who did not survive. They didn't. And in terms of like ministry, they burned out yeah. and different things because they were alone and they had no one. And it's true, like you and I, it was like, we either gonna live or die yeah. <laughs> together. It's over our families yeah. Yeah. and that, yeah. uh, that's a good point. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's the it's the relationships, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why we always talk around around here. You'll hear Adam say this, and I, we say it a lot from the stage that people's our product, relationships, right? It's all about your relationship with Jesus, with yeah. one another and to his mission. That's why everything is about connecting people to that because above all else, that is what's just gonna sustain you through the busy seasons of life. Second question, how should this model of teaching, healing, and feeding that Jesus' ministry did inform the way that you deal with people you lead? I kind of rephrased the question as I read it, but I read it more in a way that I felt I understood it, the question. (laughs) (laughs) You did rephrase that. I I think, how does his model of ministry inform the way we uh, lead people? Again, our whole value system here is predicated upon starting with Jesus. And so um, it is is everything in there, right? Um, we want to, I want us and you want us to, to speak to people uh, in the way Jesus would. Uh, we want to lead them to things that, that are helpful and that are hopeful. Uh, we want to feed them uh, not just with, with food, but with scripture. Mm-hmm. But not just with scripture, also with food. We lead the way in being generous with things. Yeah. Jesus did both things. And uh, I think... For me, as I've learned more about how Jesus led people and how he ministered people, it has actually softened me toward people. I, hmm. I'm, an, I'm an introvert at heart, and you know this about me. I'm I'm a I'm a intense introvert at heart, and and it was it, it would be easy for me, and I used to fall into this a lot of uh, just kind of you know I have to I have to work at compassion, and so um, just kind of oh, well they were an idiot, and I kind of blow it off, move on, you know, write people off, and, and move past them, and. But the more I learned about Jesus, the more I learned that Jesus was all about people. And uh, if if I'm going to lead the way Jesus leads, if I minister the way he ministered, then I have to walk amongst the people. And I have to, uh, I'm not a hugger, but I've learned to hug. I have to, uh, I have to learn how to touch and to be touched and to be part of the, the crowd of people, right? Yeah. It's just changed a lot for me. And I think, I mean, you touched on this, but I think it's a good point too, is we see this most played out in actually Jesus' followers, like, because they learned this from Jesus, mm-hmm. right? And so Jesus did it well. And then I love the story of uh, Peter and John. They went to pray and they met this lame man on the way. And he asked for help with food. He asked for help uh, yeah. with uh, money. And Peter looked at him and said, I know this is what you're asking for. And I could give you this, but I think what you need even more than that is a miracle. And so Peter healed him. Mm-hmm. And I think as leaders leading people, and this applies to you too, you need to know people so well that you know what their real needs are right yeah. and because of that sometimes it means meeting a physical need first like talking to this yeah. person they need jesus but they're not going to listen about jesus until this needs met but it, it's, it requires the mess of knowing people 
Because mm. being in people's lives is messy. Um, being in your own life is messy. You're a messy person and so are people. But it requires you taking that courageous step like Jesus and diving into people's messes to know them on such a deep level to know, okay, they're asking for this, but this is what they need at this time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number three, what individuals or groups would you describe a sheep without a shepherd and what could you do to lead or feed them? Uh, while you're thinking on this, mm. um, first thing that just popped in mind as I was reading through this is um, the Bible is very clear that we're all sheep, right? Mm -hmm. That we all are following, we're supposed to follow our shepherd, Jesus. So for me, the first thing that came to my mind is people in my life who don't know that they're missing out on Jesus. That would be shepherdless sheep, wandering sheep, lost sheep, astray. And for me, that's the neighborhood I live in. I have a huge heart um, for this eight by eight block neighborhood I live in called the North Heights neighborhood in Joplin. And in that there's about 2000 people, most of which do not go to church. They don't even know that Jesus cares or loves them. And they are literally neighbors who are lost. They are sheep without a shepherd, have no idea that Jesus loves them. Yeah. Which is why we are working to put the campus back there again, yep. right? We want to put a campus back in the neighborhood because we believe they need a shepherd. And we know the shepherd, and so mm -hmm. we want to do that. Um, I, thinking about it a little bit, I, I uh, it's hard. I'm not going to name certain people or, or groups, but you see people all over the place. And, and I, I go to I go to schools, and I teach students all the time, and I I hear their jokes and their their everything, and they think they're funny, and, and they're just mean. Uh, and and I hear these things, and then I see other students react to them, or teachers react to them, or they react to teachers, or and I see the reactions happening, and I, I think sometimes um, we react the way we do because we put ourselves at the center of the universe, hmm. and I'm offended by things. Um, but really, all of those all those words and actions and things, those are all just indicators of being shepherdless, hmm. of being a wanderer. Yeah. And um, one thing I've learned from Jesus, and I'm still learning, is to view those not through the lens of how it affects me, but how it affects the person saying it and doing it and and learning that really uh, when we follow Jesus my life's not about not about my own happiness and not all about my own comfort and convenience but it's about serving others if I'm gonna live like Jesus Jesus left heaven to be here right it was not about his comfort he was staying in heaven uh, he came to serve other people and do those things and so um, I think he recognized every crowd every place he went he picked out individuals the look in their eye the words on their tongue the actions of the body, and he thought they need a shepherd. Yeah, and they need a shepherd, and we're all surrounded by those people. They're they're everywhere. Yeah, we just have to learn to keep our eyes open. Yeah, to those needs. Yeah. The last question, number four: Are you spiritually hungry right now? How are you feeding on Jesus? What does He do to meet your spiritual, physical, and emotional needs? I feel like that's a three pronged. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of questions. We're gonna stab at it here, okay? Um, are you spiritually hungry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I go through, I'll confess to you, I go through waves of being hungry for new things with Jesus and, and growing deeper, and then waves of coasting a little bit. I think that's a natural rhythm of life. Jesus said that you abide in me, then you bear fruit. I think it's a natural rhythm of things. And um, one way that I've I've been uh, recently, probably the last six months or so, or the last year, um, allowing myself to feed upon the Word of God, because I don't know if you realize or not, but a lot of times when we have church things or gatherings or groups, midweek things, all cost things, uh, we do all the talking <laughs> and do that. So how do we let Jesus feed us? And one one way for me, I love to go uh, to go out in my garage. I do a little woodworking stuff. Um, I I just uh, you know I I try to do it um, best I can. But I go out there and while I'm working on things, uh, I put on some headphones and I listen. And I just listen to music all the time, and I still do sometimes. But I've learned, I've learned to listen to other better things in my time. Um, there's a, an app that I use called it's PRSI, Public Reading of Scripture. I I don't know what the I is, but <laughs> international. I don't, know, I don't know, maybe incorporated. I don't know, I. Um, <laughs> but I, I listen to it. They have a couple translations of the Bible, or a couple mm -hmm. versions in there, and it's it's read. It's got some some dramatic music and things going on. Um, they, different voices for different people in the Bible, and and I just listen. I just click on. I think currently I'm in the Gospel of Mark. I'm just walking through the Bible and and uh, letting it play out for me. And so I just the whole time working, I'm just hearing it. I'm not always focused on it, but it's there. 
And what I find is that I catch bits and pieces of it. Just like we learn, even when we listen to songs, we're like, I don't listen to the lyrics. Yeah, we sing along, we listen yeah. to the lyrics. They sink into us. Um, I also, um, when I'm not doing that, I'll, uh, I use Audible. So I'll click a book on an Audible and I listen to uh, somebody. It's not the Bible, but it's somebody kind of encouraging um, how we, how, how I can be a father, how I can be a, a leader, how I can um, grow as a follower of Jesus. And um, other times I'll listen to podcasts, so I'll do whatever there. Um, and sometimes I just put on the, the music and I just, um, I go out in the garage and I sing along. And I, I know that anybody that walks outside my garage or through my house, they don't hear the music. They just hear me singing badly, but, <laughs> but I go for it, right? I go for it. I love how you're talking there because I think it all comes back to part of being spiritually hungry is deciding to be a lifelong learner, Yeah. right? Because a disciple literally means a learner of you. You want to become the person who you're being discipled by. If we're going to be a disciple of Jesus, that means we want to become like Jesus, mm-hmm. and which means I got to be a lifelong learner of becoming like Jesus. Uh, I think in also different seasons of your life, you need different things. Because mm-hmm. uh, I listen to podcasts and I listen to music and stuff too. But this year though, I think the most encouraging thing to me has been these videos. Uh, not just their Thursday ones, but the the uh, Monday ones with Mark. Yeah. And then the yeah. Tuesday and Wednesday ones. I've really enjoyed listening to just people in our church mm-hmm. read through these and wrestle through scripture and listening to how God is teaching them. Because a lot of times, again, you get to hear us talk a lot. It's, it's been nice to hear other people talk. Mm-hmm. And to kind of get invited into their headspace with God and what God is doing in their life. So that's been an encouragement to me. Yeah. yeah. So Adam, um, why don't you pray for us? Because we're nearing our time of okay. being done together. And then before we send, and you should send. I'm going to say that this time because I always forget to yeah, yeah, say yeah. people. Before we send, you should pray. You should give a little insight nugget to why they should come back on Sunday. For our next thing is Jesus really divine. Mm-hmm. And then send us. Yeah. Yeah, let me pray for us and then I'll, I'll share those things. Father God, I just, I thank you that you allow us to live in a time. Uh, we were born into an era of, of your creation, this season of time that uh, we have great technology and things. And um, we don't always use those in good ways. Sometimes we avoid them altogether, but I want to thank you that you gave them to us so we can uh, listen to your word. We can uh, hear people encourage us in ways that weren't possible even 20, 30 years ago. Um, I thank you, Father, that we live surrounded by people and we go through busy seasons. You let them encourage us and prop us up and that you sustain us through everything. I thank you for your provision. I thank you for your love. And I pray that you would um, give us more opportunities to model for a broken world uh, what the shepherd looks like, who the shepherd looks like. I just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So uh, this Sunday coming up, we are continuing that year-long pursuit of Jesus, talking about is Jesus divine? Uh, that word divine uh, is Jesus God. You could say is uh, we started off the year kind of is God Jesus. We're coming back around now with Jesus hmm. here and that and and uh, this week in particular, we're looking at Mark chapter nine. Uh, it's a moment at the if you have a heading in your Bible, it might say the Transfiguration. And it's this moment Jesus goes up on the mountaintop with three of his followers, Peter, James, and John and he's transfigured before their eyes. And this incredible thing happens. And it's really, the way Mark writes the gospel, the way he shows us the lens, it's succinct, it's quick, bam, 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 these things happen. We're gonna dig in a little bit and say, what was going on right there? And and what do we know about Jesus because of this? I think it'll be a great encouragement to you uh, just to know more about um, the the majesty that Jesus brings with him into your life. And uh, it'll be great. So come join us Sunday morning, eight, 9, 30, 11 in person here live stream at 9 30 as always uh, i hope you'll join us for those times and worship be encouraged and be challenged by the holy spirit uh, as we go forward together uh, church uh, you know we'll be back on here again real soon other videos other days sunday morning all these things uh, but until we see you again you are sent have a great day